So in this video, we're going to look at graphing um, our energy. So I have an animation here. This is a roller coaster going down track. And if you notice, we have three different values displayed as bar graphs. So I have our TME, which stands for the total mechanical energy. I have PE, which stands for potential energy. And then I have KE, which stands for kinetic energy. And at this point in the unit, you should at least be familiar with these concepts. We've talked about them. So notice as the roller coaster um, goes through the loops, it's gaining height and the potential energy increases and the kinetic energy decreases. As the roller coaster goes down a hill, the potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy increases. I hope I didn't confuse you there. That was a lot of information. Um, but what I want you to look at is right here, the total mechanical energy that never changes. We're always um, at our potential energy and the kinetic energy always equal up to the total mechanical energy that never changes in a system. So we say that energy is conserved in this case. So these bar graphs represent the total energy in a system, like I said. I went through the abbreviations KE, PE, and TME, and like I said, the total mechanical energy is simply the sum of all of the other energies in our system, the potential kinetic, thermal, and work energy. Um, both sides of the equation must be equal, and like I said, energy is conserved always. Okay. Now, in the previous lesson, I said that thermal energy was lost, but it's not really lost. If you think about it, you take your hands and rub them together, they start to warm up. And then if you were to hold your palms flat, that energy, that heat energy kind of goes into the air. So that thermal energy is lost from our body, but it still exists in the, uh, in the surrounding air. So it's not really lost, it's still accounted for. So we're going to go through a couple of examples and we're going to essentially graph the information. So it says a ball sitting on the top of a hill rolls to the ground um, level at the bottom of the hill. So you've got a hill and you've got a ball sitting up at the top here and the ball rolls down the hill. So initially we say that we have um, potential energy. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this in. We are maxed out on potential energy because we are at the top of that hill. Now, when the ball rolls to the ground, that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Um, so if you look on my bar graph here, I shaded four units initially for potential, and I shaded four units for kinetic on the final energy. So energy is conserved here. That potential energy is just being converted into kinetic energy. All right, in this example, we have a car. It's moving at 25 miles an hour. So we can say that we're moving already. We have kinetic energy. And if you think about this example, you're like driving along. Oops, I don't want yellow. Let's pick a different color. So we're driving along. We're in a car, something like that. We're driving along. Um, and right as our car gets to this point here, right before it starts to climb that hill, it runs out of gas. And the car coasts to the top of the hill. So our car kind of coasts to the top of the hill and that land begins at, or finishes at that spot right there. So it ends up gaining height, which we learned is potential energy. Um, and that's it. So our kinetic energy in this case is being converted into potential energy, kind of the opposite of the previous problem. All right, so in this example, we've got Superman and Superman is gonna be helping us out here. Uh, Superman realizes that we're having a rough day, all right, so we're sitting in our car at the bottom of a hill. All right, we ran out of gas, so Superman comes along, and Superman gives us a push to the top of the hill. So we're not moving. We're sitting in a car. It's just ran out of gas, so we have no energy right now. There's no kinetic or potential energy. So Superman comes along, and Superman gives it a push to the top of the hill. So in pushing the car, Superman is doing work. Oops, I was hoping to get green here. All right, so Superman does work to get our car to the top of the hill. 
And since our, our car finishes by resting on the top of the hill, we have potential energy. Anytime there is a height involved, we have potential energy. So Superman had to put work into the system. That work energy becomes our potential energy. So think about the last two scenarios. We had the car that ran out of the gas and kind of coasted up to the top of the hill. So in that case, kinetic energy was just converted to potential energy. In the second case, we had no energy and we had to do work to get our car to the top of the hill. So that work was converted into potential energy. All right, in this example, we have a car moving along the ground, just level ground. All right, so there's my car drawing. And as you can see, I'm not very good at drawing cars. Um, and it tells us that our car eventually comes to a stop. So our car is moving, so we can go ahead and shade in the K for kinetic energy. And if it's eventually coming to a stop on level ground, so we're not climbing a hill, we're not gaining potential energy, our final um, energies are going to be zero. We're not going to have any kinetic or potential energy. So if you think back to our forces unit, um, there are tiny little imperfections in the ground, and there are tiny little imperfections in the wheels here, all right? And when those rub together, we get a force called friction. Friction opposes motion. So when we're trying to move forward, that friction's making it hard for us to move forward, or it's making it more difficult. So in our initial um, setup here, we are going to have what's... Um, we're going to have friction, but we're going to represent that as negative work. So, you know, if you think about it, if you're trying to help somebody, you're doing positive work like, um, you know, Superman, for example, he was pushing our car up the hill. He was helping us. That would be an example of positive work. All right. But if you're not helping, if you're kind of doing the opposite, like friction, you're going to have negative work. Now, if you notice on our bar chart here, we have positive four for the kinetic, all right? We have four units for kinetic, and then we have four units um, negative of work. So those are going to cancel each other out to give us our zero net energy on our graph here. All right, in this final example, we have a golf cart. It's moving at 15 miles an hour. So we've got a hill again, and we got our golf cart, which looks just like a regular car. And um, we know that we're not going to be able to coast up to the top of the hill um, with the speed that we're moving. So right when we get to this point here, we're going to hit the pedal of the gas. And we're going to let the car help us up to the top. We're going to use the car's engine. So I'm going to go ahead and shade two units of kinetic energy, okay, because we're already moving. And then because the car's engine is going to be helping us out, the car's engine is going to be doing work, I'm also going to go ahead and shade two boxes here for work. Now, since our car reaches the top of the hill, I'm going to go ahead and shade in our potential energy. Okay, so we have two units of kinetic energy. We have two units of work. That gives us a total of four units of potential energy. And these type of problems are very similar to the ones that you'll see in the future, uh, perhaps on a test. So I would definitely practice these and make sure that you know how to do these. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, shoot me an email, and I'm happy to help walk you through these.